Unman Not Thyself by Sir Thomas Brown, 1605 to 1682, from Christian Morals. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Live unto the dignity of thy nature and leave it not disputable at last whether thou hast been a man or since thou art a composition of man and beast how thou hast predominantly passed thy days to state the denomination unman not therefore thyself by a bestial transformation nor realize old fables expose not thyself by four-footed manners unto monstrous draughts and caricature representations think not after the old pythagorean conceit what beast thou mayest be after death be not under any brutal metempsychosis while you livest and walkest about erectly under the scheme of man in thine own circumference as in that of the earth let the rational horizon be larger than the sensible and the circle of reason than of sense let the divine part be upward and the region of beast below otherwise tis but to live invertedly and wish thy head unto the heels of thy antipodes desert not thy title to a divine particle and union with invisibles let true knowledge and virtue tell the lower world thou art a part of the higher let thy thoughts be of things which have not entered into the hearts of beasts think of things long past and long to come acquaint thyself with the corrigium of the stars and consider the vast expansion beyond them let intellectual tubes give thee a glance of things which visible organs reach not have a glimpse of incomprehensibles and thoughts of things which thoughts but tenderly touch lodge immaterials in thy head ascend unto invisibles fill thy spirit with spirituals with the mysteries of faith the magnality of religion and thy life with the honour of god without which though giants in wealth and dignity we are but dwarfs and pygmies in humanity and may hold a pitiful rank in that triple division of mankind into heroes men and beasts for though human souls are said to be equal yet is there no small inequality in their operations some maintain the allowable station of men many are far below it and some have been so divine as to approach the apogeum of their natures and to be in the confinium of spirits behold thyself by inward optics and the crystalline of thy soul strange it is that in the most perfect sense there should be so many fallacies that we are fain to make a doctrine and often to see by art but the greatest imperfection is in our inward sight that is to be ghosts unto our own eyes and while we are so sharp-eyed as to look through others to be invisible unto ourselves for the inward eyes are more fallacious than the outward the vices we scoff at in others laugh at us in ourselves avarice pride falsehood lie undiscerned and blindly in us even to the age of blindness and therefore to see ourselves interiorly we are fain to borrow other men's eyes wherein true friends are good informers and censurers no bad friends conscience only that can see without light sits in the areopagi and dark tribunal of our hearts surveying our thoughts and condemning our obliquities happy is that state of vision that can see without light though all should look as before the creation when there was not an eye to see or light 
to actuate a vision wherein notwithstanding obscurity is only imaginable respectively unto eyes for unto god there was none eternal light was ever created light was for the creation not himself and as he saw before the sun may still also see without it in the city of the new jerusalem there is neither sun nor moon where glorified eyes must see by the archetypal sun or the light of god able to illuminate intellectual eyes and make unknown visions intuitive perceptions in spiritual beings may perhaps hold some analogy unto vision but yet how they see us or one another what eye what light or what perception is required unto their intuition is yet dark unto our apprehension and even how they see god or how unto our glorified eyes the beatific vision will be celebrated another world must tell us when perceptions will be new and we may hope to behold invisibles End of on man not thyself by sir thomas brown sixteen hundred and five to sixteen hundred and eighty two from christian morals